Dardab region spans the entire width of Namibia, from the Atlantic Ocean in the west to Botswana and South Africa in the east. The name Hardab means nipple in Kukugovab and refers to how the conical hills appear to the early inhabitants of this region. With its spectacular wildlife, red Kalahari sand dunes, unique fauna, world heritage landscapes, adventure activities, and dramatic mountain ranges, the Hardab region welcomes you. The pride of the small town of Gojas, these regional champions perform regularly at cultural festivals around the country. The N. Muchauna Primary School Cultural Group performs the Namastap dance, where the men symbolically try to woo the woman. These learners took the initiative in 2002, after government encouraged the nation to promote cultural and spiritual awareness in the country. <laughs> Taking their name from a phrase that means simply amazing, the Amaburuja Daveb cultural group have worked relentlessly to turn the tide and create a better future, not only for themselves, but also for other orphans and vulnerable children in the Malta here area. The group offers them a forum from which to share their treasured Nama cultural heritage. The Hardab region is known as the agricultural center of Namibia. Hardab is also home to the famous Kalahari. This red desert is the largest continuous expanse of sand on the planet. These sand dunes reach heights of 15 to 30 meters and extend over hundreds of kilometers. With an overall area of almost 50,000 square kilometers, the Namib No Cliff Park is the largest game park in Africa. One of the many landmarks in the Sossel's Flay area, Dead Flay, is surrounded by the highest sand dunes in the world, reaching 300 to 400 meters into the sky. These seemingly lifeless trees are estimated to have stood here for the last 900 years. Although not petrified, the sun-scorched wood does not decompose because of the extremely dry conditions. A visit here is a must. In search of the scarce water in the Kalahari, the roots of this camel thorn tree grow horizontally under the red sand. It is practically the only tree that has adapted to this arid environment and is a key component to its ecosystem. The Acacia areoloba, or camel thorn tree, provides nutrients for other plants and shrubs that grow densely around it 
while the tree's leaves provide food and refuge for animals. There are seven species of Meroles, also known as desert lizards, that inhabit southwestern Africa. They are especially abundant in the Namib Desert. The giraffe is the tallest of all animals. It gets its great height not only from its legs, which are around 2 meters long, but also from its neck, which is even longer. The ostrich is the largest living bird species and lays the largest egg of all birds. Well adapted to dry conditions, they can go for long periods without water. Oryx herds number anywhere between 5 and 40 animals. Also known as the Gemsbok, it gets enough moisture from its food and therefore does not need to drink that much water. In its effort to conserve moisture, its body temperature can rise to levels that would kill most other animals and can tolerate arid areas which are uninhabitable to most other antelope. The oryx is Namibia's national animal and appears on our coat of arms. The plain zebra is highly social and forms small family groups called harems. Harems consist of a single stallion, several mares and their recent offspring. At the Lake Uanob Resort, various boat ride opportunities make for a perfect leisurely afternoon. From relaxed family outings to high-speed water skiing, water activities are plentiful. A variety of accommodation facilities is on offer here, making your stay a memorable one. Tube rides are another thrilling and easy way of pumping your adrenaline. All you need to do is just hang on and have fun. As one of the world's leading centers of its kind, Butterwasser offers soaring and scenic flights with either a glider, a microlight or a motorized plane. Incredibly fast and exceptionally long flight conditions have resulted in numerous soaring and gliding world records. Affordable accommodation is also available here. way to experience the heart of the Namib Desert is by way of a hot air balloon safari. Watching the spectacular sunrise over this magnificent landscape from a silent hot air balloon is the experience of a lifetime never to be forgotten. Being the oldest desert on the planet, the Namib forms one of the most visually stunning ecosystems in the world. My name is Quentin Artung. I am the warden at Namibra Nature Reserve. Namibra started through the vision of uh, our current chairman of the board, Mr. Albi Bruckner. 
and he bought some of the first farms here in the, uh, in the late 80s. He decided to do something with his land and the best thing he thought he could do with it is, is to put it into conservation. And subsequently other farms joined the reserve to create a conservation area, sort of like a wildlife sanctuary for, uh, for, for the animals and to get this area back to what it was like before the livestock farmers came in and completely over, over utilize this very fragile and sensitive environment. At first it was 13 farms and later on it grew to 15, but all the internal fences, boundary fences and uh, the camp fences of the, of the farms were completely removed, which amounts to over a thousand kilometers in fencing that was removed, which creates such a, a bigger space for the animals to move in. Uh, we've successfully reintroduced Plains, zebra, leopards, cheetahs, hard to bears, and giraffe into this area again. So that that is one of the success stories. We uh, also have the fairy circles here, which is quite uh, unique to the Namib Desert. No one knows what, uh, what caused the fairy circles, and we have countless researchers coming to to find out the, uh, what the answer is behind the mystery. I mean, we have researchers working on. Um, theories such as ants causing it, gas from underneath, soil causing it, termites causing it. Some other uh, scientists think that it is a combination of the soil and the, the rainfall. So there, there's lots of different theories, so one is bound to prove, prove to be correct. In 2012, we became the first uh, dark sky reserve in Africa, and we got the Gold Tier Award from the Dark Sky Association, which means we have one of the darkest skies in the world and when uh, by the time we got proclaimed as a dark sky reserve we were only one of three gold tier dark sky reserves in the world. Hi everyone, welcome back once again to the Endless Horizons cooking show. We've driven all the way to the hard up region, which I'm pretty excited about because we've got some fantastic ingredients. Today, I'll be preparing for you an Asian-inspired dish, stir-fry dish, using local ingredients found from this area. So let's have a look at the ingredients. Firstly, we've got some beautiful zebra fillets, which I'm really excited to be using. The second ingredient is a gouda-like cheese, which has caraway seeds in it, which will just give an extra flavor to the stir-fry. My third ingredient will be these amazing vegetables from the Hardap Dam agricultural farm within the uh, Hardap region. I'll be using green peppers, some beautiful leeks, I've got aubergine, and also red cabbage. So the first step in the cooking process is to start cutting up your vegetables for the stir fry. I'll start off with my green peppers. Next, I'll move on to my aubergines. I've taken the liberty of pre-slicing one already. Grab a leaf. Then we can move on to our red cabbage. At this stage, we move on to ginger because I mentioned that it was an Asian infused dish. Obviously, you need some ginger. Then at this stage, we can move to the fillet. Slice thin slices within the meat to begin with, and then you can start to actually halve it again and turn them into strips. At this stage, the second stage of the cooking process, we're going to start frying everything. Not too high, about medium heat is perfect. Then you want about 5 to 10 milliliters of cooking oil, just enough to coat your pan. Okay, so you add your meat, you let it caramelize, that sizzling is great. So at this stage, I'm ready to add my veggies. You want to grab a little bit of your soy sauce. I don't measure too often. I kind of just play it by ear. I guesstimate. I like my stir fry a little bit saucier, so I'm going to add a little bit of cornstarch to it. Um, just mixed in some water. You need about a teaspoon. So you can actually add about a tablespoon of your sesame oil to the dish at this stage. And there you have it, Asian-inspired zebra filet stir-fry. 
Make the endless horizons of the Hardab region your next holiday destination.